Okay, so for the second side, um, this first question has to do with density. Density is one of the lessons that comes up in Geometry Nation. So if you need a refresher on density, it's coming up as well. Um, but you should have learned it in science as well. The equation for density, which you may have memorized, density equals mass over volume. Does that ring a bell? No. If you have trouble remembering that equation, the way to remember it is it's like a heart, mass over volume, and that's how you set up the equation. So for this, it says a scientist discovers a spiritual, spherical object in the solar system, a mass of this mass, and a volume of this volume. He uses a table shown to classify the planet based on its density. So if the density is between 0.3 and 2.1, then it is a gas. If the density is between these two numbers, it is rocky. Um, so we are going to determine the density and then determine whether it's gas or rocky. So density equals mass, which we get 1.1 times 10 to the 25th power over volume, 2.9 times 10 to the 24th. For this, I don't know if you remember how to simplify this, but 10 to the 25th over 10 to the 24th, um, you could subtract these exponents or just know that 24 tens will cancel out and it just leaves one 10 left up here. So this would be 1.1 times 10 over 2.9. 1.1 times 10 is just 11. 11 divided by 2.9 equals, you do this in a calculator, you get 3.79. It says to round to the nearest tenth, so we'll call that 3.8. So 3.8 would land in this rocky range, so the object can be classified as rocky because its density is 3.8 grams per cubic okay then this one is a proof but don't be scared it's actually pretty simple um it says lines f and h are parallel Select the statements and a reason to complete the proof shown, showing that 3 is congruent to 6. So we're trying to prove 3 is congruent to 6. It says F and H are parallel. That's given. Then it says for the reason, corresponding angles of two parallel lines are congruent. So when you hit this drop down, all you're looking for is corresponding angles. So there'll be a bunch of different angle pairs. You're just looking for the ones that are corresponding. And in that those choices, it's angle 2 and angle six. So you can say angle two and six are congruent because they are corresponding angles. The next reason says vertical angles are congruent. So again, you're gonna just gonna hit the drop down and look for the angle pairs that are vertical angles and it ends up being two and three. So angle two is congruent to angle three. And then the last thing, it says that three is equal to six. Well, if two is equal to six and two is equal to three, then three must be equal to six that is transitive property. Oh, it already says property, so I can just write transitive. Okay, the last two right here, this one requires some like calculations and stuff. This one is pretty simple. It only takes like a second to answer. We're gonna do the long one first and then we'll just have a short one after that. So for this one, um, it says right square pyramid. That square part is important. And a sphere are made of marble. The dimensions of each figure in feet are shown. Um, the density of marble is 160 pounds per cubic foot. What is the difference in pounds between the weight of the sphere and the weight of the pyramid? Round your answer to the nearest hundredth. Okay, well, density, equals mass over volume. They gave us the density is 160. We need to figure out the mass. Um, so we need to actually calculate the volume of each of these to find the mass of each of them. 
So down here in this area, I'm going to zoom out so I can see the whole thing. Down here in this area, I'm going to find the volume of the pyramid. Pyramid volume. And then sphere volume. And then I can plug those volumes into this equation to find the mass of each. So pyramid volume, I'm looking at the reference sheet. It's one third area of the base times the height. Volume equals one third area of the base times the height. Sphere volume, four thirds pi r cubed. Okay, so pyramid area of the base, it told me it's a square pyramid. So the base dimension is 1.5 times 1.5 and the height is two. And then sphere volume, four thirds pi, the radius is one cubed. And then solving these, 1.5 times 1.5 times two, Divide by 3, 1.5. So the volume of the pyramid, 1.5 feet cubed. And then volume of the sphere, 4 divided by 3 times pi. 1 cubed, 1 times 1 times 1 is just 1. What did I just do? Sorry pi times 1 is this number. I'm going to try not to round it too much. 0 0.188790. Okay, I need to find the mass of each. So density equals mass over volume. The density is 160 mass over volume. Multiply this by 1.5, and it comes out to mass 240 pounds. Okay, then from here, it wants to know the difference in pounds between the weight of the sphere and the weight of the pyramid. So my last step is to subtract these two numbers. I'm going to do this up here. So we get 670.20643 minus 240 pounds, and that equals 430.2064. It says to round to the nearest hundredth, which would be this place. So I get 430.21. I'm going to put that in the box. Something I've noticed with these, when it comes to like the answer key, it'll accept a range of answers. So if you didn't quite round it the same way I did, um, anything from like 430.1 to 430.5 would be an accepted answer. And as long as you get it within that range, it'll accept your answer. So it's nice that they account that different people round differently, or if you use 3.14, it should still accept the answer. I know, that one is a bit of a jump. The next one's easy. Okay, the next one says a rectangle and a vertical line are shown. The object, which object is generated by rotating the rectangle around the vertical line? 
So if you rotated this shape around the vertical line, which shape would it make? It would make this one. So if you rotated it around, it would make this shape. What? You don't think it would? Like, because that space would be kept, and if it was rotated 360, it would make this smooth mm -hmm. edge. Yeah. Okay, and that is all.